Hello YouTube friends! Today I'm reacting to a Quora thread that my editor found for me and I'm not sure what it is. So without further ado, let's jump in. So it says, my three-year-old daughter wakes me up at 3 a.m. to ask for candy slash chocolate and she will not eat anything during the day other than that. How can I make her eat something different at normal times? <laughs> Okay, this is a fantastic question for a lot of reasons. So I'm going to answer it first and then I'll read the comments and dive into those. So just referring to what I know the intuitive eating book says specifically for children, but also really for all of us is that we wanna focus on equalizing and normalizing all of our foods and food groups. So if your child thinks that candy or chocolate has this special or forbidden status, it's going to be on a pedestal in their minds as this novel food that they need to get more of because they don't know when those privileges are going to be taken away. So something that I think is helpful is legitimately offering that, but also offering a lot of other foods at the same time and eating all of those other foods in front of and with them. That way they are normalized in their mind because chances are you as a parent, obviously you're wanting them to get good nutrition and fuel into their bodies. And so they're probably internalizing some of the messages that you have internalized in your head, which may be things like candy and chocolate are really bad for you and I shouldn't eat them. And if your kid's picking up on that, they're going to think like, oh my gosh, like I don't know when I'm gonna get this again because mom thinks or because dad thinks and therefore they're going to react to that. So try to normalize it for yourself as well as the parent because kids pick up on what you're thinking and feeling, whether you intend that or not. For example, a lot of parents feel the need to sort of sneak candy or chocolate behind their kids' backs and sort of steal away that moment where they can partake of said forbidden foods. But that actually reinforces a negative mindset, not only for yourself, but especially for your child who is seeing you maybe act differently around these foods and feel like you need to sneak it. So they will equate that to making it sort of forbidden, but also special in their own minds where it gets this novel label and they won't stop wanting it. If the daughter is waking her up consistently at 3 a.m. in the morning, like one, croak and I am sorry. Two, like, it seems unrealistic for her to be waking up at that time and just wanting that and then not eating anything during the day other than that. If that's legitimately all your daughter is eating, take her to a doctor. Like there is something metabolically going on with her probably that needs to be checked out. Um, because what, <laughs> What I'm seeing here that's concerning is if she's legitimately only eating candy, then habituation is not happening for her. To explain habituation, I'll give an example. Imagine you're sitting to dinner and instead of having a well-rounded meal, all you have is broccoli. So you sit down, you start eating, and like, assuming you like broccoli, it's gonna taste great. You're gonna be loving it for the first few minutes, but then there will come a point fairly early on into eating it, somewhere between two and five minutes, where you no longer want to eat it anymore because you've just had enough broccoli and you want something else. That's habituation happening in your body. Your body will get used to one specific food and want to move on and get more variety. This happens even with things like candy or chocolate. I know some people don't believe this because they think that food addiction or sugar addiction is real. There's not enough scientific evidence to actually suggest that that's true, but there is sufficient evidence to suggest that if you sit and eat candy, you're gonna eventually feel sick and you're eventually gonna want something else. So if she's legitimately eating candy and wanting nothing else, then something isn't quite right. That being said, if she does have reason to believe that candy is more special and more desirable, 
than other foods, then she could be telling herself that that's what she wants simply because it's on a pedestal in her mind, which takes me back to the equalizing the foods answer. So let's dive into these comments. Stop buying junk. Unless your daughter is a very unusual three-year-old, she does not have either a driver's license or a bank account. I don't see what either of those things have to do with food. But the only candy slash chocolate in your house is candy slash chocolate. Oh, okay, I see you. <laughs> is candy slash chocolate that has been brought in by adults. When she wakes you up at 3 a.m. to ask for candy, tell her there isn't any. Offer her a drink of water and put her back to bed. Okay, honestly though, yeah, I am concerned that the waking up at 3 a.m. thing may interfere with you as a parent. And if she is hungry, like let her get a snack and go back to bed. Try to do it as quickly and efficiently as possible because it is very vital for both of you to be conditioning yourselves for a good night's sleep. And if the 3 a.m. wake up for candy is actually consistent, try to focus on prioritizing sleep above the candy and the food. When she demands candy for breakfast, tell her there isn't any. Offer her eggs and toast and then close the kitchen. Whether or not she wants to eat the eggs and toast is up to her. When she demands candy for lunch, tell her there isn't any. Offer her chicken and rice. I see a huge, huge trend here. I'm gonna close the kitchen. Whether or not she wants to eat the chicken and rice is up to her. So a lot of things here. I understand what they're getting at here, but it's a very rooted in diet culture mindset where out of sight, out of mind is king because if the food isn't there, you're not gonna eat it and therefore you're not gonna have these outcomes. When in reality, doing that puts you in a position where anytime you're actually around that food, it's going to trigger you to eat that food and to overeat it or to binge when that's not what you want or would do if you normalize it. So I'd say if you want to continue buying the candy, like if that's something that brings your family joy, have some candy in your house. That being said, um, kind of back to my initial response, make sure you're offering a variety of foods all the time and normalizing all of those options because if they're actually normalized in your toddler's head, she's not going to consistently choose the candy. And like, I know this is hard for adults to wrap our minds around and I wish I had more personal examples of my own children, but children are inherently born intuitive eaters. And I know that even in my own daughter, I give her whatever I am eating and she will hit her max on the sugary things and move on to another thing, same as I do. She's probably better at it than I am because she hasn't been affected by diet culture at all yet. And that's exactly what we should be nurturing in our children is that innate ability to recognize what their body needs and then move on to the next thing their body needs, whether that's another food or playtime or whatever it be. Honestly, we need to give our children a lot more trust than we are cultured to, especially when it comes to our food. They are smart enough to make their own food choices and actually have good positive outcomes for their bodies. The only caveat to that is if you are influencing them to make negative decisions by dichotomizing food choices or putting certain foods on pedestals that make it seem really special in comparison to other foods. Otherwise, they have a really good innate ability to decipher for themselves. <laughs> I'm shocked at all these awful answers. The first thing you need to do is take your child to a doctor. Asking for candy at 3 a.m., she could be suffering from some kind of medical issue. No one should get advice from the internet. This child could die from some of this horrible advice. If a medical doctor has eliminated, eliminated any health issues, you should seek parenting guidance from a trustworthy source like a family counselor and not a web forum. So I do actually agree with this comment to an extent. As I said before, like if they are just eating candy and not looking for other variety, I would take them to a doctor too. Like they need to be getting other things into their body. And if they're not making that decision, then 
something might be going on in their body that you aren't aware of and that should be checked out. Let's see, I have twins. They're grown now and old enough that I can send them out for beer if I want. Okay, but the lessons I learned 25 years ago still apply. The question indicates that you are setting yourself up for much bigger problems than the kid wanting candy at 3 a.m. If you don't fix it now, it will only get worse. Here are my basic parenting tips. No means no. You have to train your child to understand that when you say no, that is the end of the discussion. This leads to the second point. Always be consistent. If the child knows that certain behavior gets the same reaction every time, they will reduce the behavior that gets punished and increase the rewarded behavior, which leads to the third point. So one, they seem to have strayed from the overall question and are just giving basic parenting tips, which I don't necessarily see how this applies to the original question because your child asking for candy isn't necessarily behavior that needs punishment. So yeah, like they give a, a story here, but it's not necessarily related to food. So I'm just gonna skip it. There are distinctions between like actual food related parenting situations and not. So I'm just gonna focus on the food related ones. She will, after a few days starvation, not imposed by you, but the kind she will stubbornly go through if you say that chocolate is not food and she isn't getting any and offer her some better options. She will agree that other forms of food are likely also edible. She has you on the leash. A toddler wakes a bloody adult up and makes silly demands at 3 a.m. She's presently established that she's the ruler of this kingdom and you reinforce this idea by submitting to her orders and whims. A parent whipped around by a child is never a pretty sight. That's true and you need, well, it's true to a degree, because as I said before, we do need to give our children more trust than we are cultured to, but that looks a lot different than being ordered around by them. Establish boundaries with your children, absolutely. And if you don't have certain foods, tell them that. But be honest with your kids, because if you're hiding a stash of chocolate in your closet and you tell them there is none in the house, they're going to find out and they're going to hate you and they're going to keep that chocolate on the pedestal in their brains. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's fair. Hate you is a strong word, but like, they aren't gonna hate you, but they will despise you for doing that and they aren't gonna trust you anymore. And you want trust between yourself and your child or this whole system will collapse. Anyway, I hate this line though, where she says, if you say that chocolate is not food and she isn't getting any, offer her some better options. Chocolate is food. And depending on the chocolate, there's actually substantial nutrition to it. If you want to check out the food theory reaction video we did, it actually talks about a lot of the vitamins and minerals you can get from chocolate that is a legitimately good source for. That being said, you also need other foods in your diet, clearly, and I'm not trying to say that you don't. This whole thing is like variety, balance. They should be able to do that on their own though, as long as you're not interfering with that process and nothing wrong biologically is happening in their bodies. Go back to bed. Amen, get your sleep. Serve her food at normal meal times. If she doesn't eat, she doesn't eat. If the food makes decent leftovers, keep serving it to her until she eats it or it goes bad. And start this, no. No, that's teaching her to eat the same food over and over again. Why would you do that? No, no, she'll eat. When I was a kid, the options were eat what mom made or don't eat. That wasn't cruelty. That's just how it was. Sometimes if mom was making something she knew you really, really didn't like, she'd make something special for you, but I still had to eat lasagna more often than not. That a child, a three-year-old wakes you up and demands food and this works is frankly a failure of parenting. I'm assuming this is your first child. That is so rude. Okay, one, just because that's how your family functioned doesn't mean that's the best way to function. All sorts of families find different rhythms and that's totally fine. Your child knows when they need to eat better than you do. And it's not based around your meal times. Hopefully they can get into the same sort of rhythm. But I am of the mindset that if your child is hungry and dinner is not ready, don't make them wait because that's going to interfere with them understanding and responding to their hunger signals in the future, which is a much bigger pain and can wreak havoc on their health more so than just letting them eat a snack before dinner is ready and then they'll eat less of dinner and that's fine. Then you'll have leftovers. It's not the end of the world. Being woken by your child at 3 a.m. 
for food isn't a sign of bad parenting. It's a sign that they trust you to take care of their needs regardless of the time. That being said, if this is a consistent thing, they may need to be eating a bigger dinner or they may need additional snacks throughout the day to actually sustain them. That way they aren't waking you up in the middle of the night for food. That being said, that's a system you can try to create and see if that solves the problem. But just the waking you up at 3 a.m. for food is not, do not feel guilty about your parenting for that. That's, this person's a jerk. Like just the audacity. I'm assuming this is your first child. Oh my gosh, okay. I knew a family where the younger daughter ate nothing but sweets. There were drawers full of chocolate bars in the house. This was because the mother had grown up in a very poor household and couldn't have sweets. So she determined to spoil her kids, not realizing how detrimental to their health this would be. Both children were very pale and skinny and looked unhealthy. If they refused dinner, then their mother just gave them the pudding so they'd at least eaten something. They never ate vegetables or fruit or meat, fish, eggs, only occasionally cheese with biscuits. One day, the three-year-old started peeing blood-stained urine and was rushed to A&E and admitted to a pediatric ward where hemolytic anemia was diagnosed and she almost died before they got it under control. As she recovered, the hospital staff joked about the fact that she was always hungry and ate very well at mealtimes. After the experience, I noticed she and her sister ate normally once back home and the collections of chocolate bars disappeared and I always wondered if mom hadn't been given a PE talk by the doctors and her serious illness hadn't been related to or caused by the restricted diet. So I'm guessing that it was 100% because of the diet, uh, which is why I would recommend if your child is consistently not even just with candy, but if your child is just consistently seeking out the same food over and over and they don't agree to eat anything else um, and they don't take it when offered, then see a doctor because something may be seriously going on in their bodies that you just don't know about. That being said, I also like that they point out the mom's backstory because growing up poor can very much so cause you to dichotomize foods and put the foods you were unable to afford on a pedestal. So in this case, it happened to be sweets and that did backfire because your kids then also put it on a pedestal. Because as I mentioned before, we pass those idealizations onto our children intentionally or otherwise, mostly otherwise. And so if you have drawers of these prized sweets, that's what your children are also going to focus on. And because the child seems so interested in eating her meals in the hospital, it seems like this is maybe the first time other foods were exciting to her. And that can very well be because it was the option presented to her. And I know from my own experiences of being in the hospital, when you're offered food, it's like, hallelujah, bring it on, you know? So <laughs> that's something else that you can think about in your own home is like, are you making other foods exciting? Are you making your dinners exciting? because part of your children finding satisfaction in their eating experiences is making it fun, making it exciting. And if sweets are the only things that seem exciting and fun, they're going to be what your children hone in on. So I'm just gonna finish with the last, well, and one more comment. Holy crap, this is super long. Okay, I'll read part of it. I'm a mother of six. <laughs> she gives the ages. So you can say I have my fair, I've had my fair share and still do of kids only wanting something and especially stuff not good for them. Already your attitude of saying that it's not good for them is probably why they wanted it. <laughs> I think you should buy a little lock box, something cheap, let them help decorate it, bedazzle, <laughs> smiley face, <laughs> and call it the earn your treat box. <sighs> why is this so adorable and so triggering at the same time? <laughs> So can be sugar-free candy. What? That's not real candy, but okay. Make some homemade chocolate candy treats with them and wrap them up, but let them know they can only earn one treat from it and have a treat one time a day and after dinner is all eaten, for example. You can tell them if they sleep through the night and don't wake up and are good all day, your judgment on good, of course. Then after they eat all their dinner and they may pick up one from the treat box, you also can make a gift box. It can be little cheap things at young age or even homemade things you can make, whether with, okay, I get the idea. I know so many people who do this and think it's a fantastic idea. 
If your goal is to keep your children in check and have them eating what you want them to be eating while they are under your roof, this is a great idea. If you want your child to be able to make wholesome, well-rounded eating decisions throughout their life, including when they move out of your house, this is a horrible idea. Because as soon as they're gone from your house and your rules, they're not going to know how to handle themselves around those foods that were once forbidden and they had to earn. And there's a myriad of reactions that I've seen in different people based on this sort of an upbringing. They're not good outcomes though. They often lead to restriction and binge cycles or having this perfectionistic need to earn their food in general. And that's often not just limited to sweets when they move out. So all in all, I say this <laughs> is actually a horrible idea if you're wanting to teach your children how to feed themselves when they leave. So just to reiterate some of the best ways to help your children eat a variety of good wholesome foods is to not be afraid of habituation. If they're wanting a certain food, allow them to eat that food till they're sick of it. And then they will want to move on to other things. And make sure that you're actually providing and offering consistently a variety of foods across all food groups. That way they have the opportunity to try things, see if they like it or not, because it also takes several exposures to a certain food before a kid tends to be more accepting of trying it. So consistently offer things to them and they'll eventually come around. As long as you as a parent are establishing that all foods are truly equalized and you're not placing anything on a pedestal or making something seem novel to your children, they're going to choose things across the board that will even themselves out. If you've seen this in your own children, let me know in the comments below. And if you have questions about how to implement this in your own household, also ask me in the comments below and I'd be happy to give you my input. As always, I'll see you next time.